Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. In the last part we procedurally modeled a waffle using volumetric modeling and a whole bunch of stuff so if you haven't seen it, go back and watch part one. But now we finish with the finale, part two, procedural shading and making this not look like a honeycomb with a bunch of copper in it. It, it doesn't look good, okay? Um, so. Uh, since we modeled this procedurally, I thought, why not, let's also make materials that don't have any image textures, nothing like that, let's make it procedural. So, uh, we, we left off uh, with an HDRI, with the syrup material, and if you remember, our whole procedural setup uh, ended up with two materials, a syrup material and a waffle material. So, uh, let's make a syrup material that looks good, and a waffle material that looks good. Uh, starting off with the syrup, uh, most importantly, bring down the roughness so it's reflective, so you don't want it to be rough, but you want it to be shiny. Uh, so I'm going to do a roughness of 0.1. Take the transmission, if you haven't already, and make sure that it's set at 1. This is going to make it kind of transparent and watery and all this. And I think the color is off. So I'm just going to bring it, keep it orange, but make it less, less bright. So something like this. I mean, I don't know, it's going to be a little hard without seeing the context of the, um, of the waffle, but I think maybe a bit darker would look good, okay? Uh, so we'll come back to the syrup, now let's handle the waffle material, which is the most important part. Uh, for this, we want to give this kind of a baked look, and I think the easiest way to do that is with a ambient occlusion node. The reason I'm going to use this <clears throat> is it generates this uh, black and white mask. Um, that kind of tells us which parts are kind of high concavity in this case. So it would tell us which parts should be uh, looking one color or another. It's just a good way to create a baked uh, look to this. So with the, the ambient occlusion, I'm going to use a color ramp node and just pick two waffly colors. So kind of like a kind of like a yellowish something. That kind of looks like a waffle. And with the other one, I'm going to bring this in closer so you can see it's... Uh, coming in in the concave areas. This is gonna be more of a whitish, brighter looking, or redder looking, eh, something like that. We can hone it in, but I think that looks good. So we're gonna take this, connect it to the base color. I'm also gonna connect it to the subsurface color. And a big thing when you're making baked looking goods or something that you cook, uh, you wanna add subsurface, not too much. Otherwise it kind of looks like transparent wax, uh, but just a bit. Uh, so you can see here is the after, and here's the before. It just kind of makes it not look as much like uh, Play-Doh, in my opinion. And let's also, while we're here, let's do some viewport denoising. Uh, so we're starting to get closer, uh, but it still kind of looks fake and kind of like a, uh, you know, one of those uh, Barbie doll cook sets kind of things. Like it, it looks a bit plasticky and like a toy. Uh, we need to add some kind of texture uh, to the surface here. Uh, what I'm going to do is with the waffle material, I'm going to add a bump node to get some normal detail. And for the height, I'm going to use a noise texture. So nice, by the way, that we have this um, this automatic add feature where you hover over it, you know. Um, we could use the uh, standard coordinates, which kind of has these uh, striations, uh, which looks pretty good. Uh, if you do not want that and you want it to be even, uh, use object coordinates. Uh, but I think this looks pretty good. I'm going to bring up the scale by a lot. And let's see what this looks like. Yeah, so you can see now we have a bunch of extra detail here. So here's the uh, before and the after. Definitely adds quite a bit. Okay, so I think that is going to add a good amount of detail. I'm actually going to up the detail on the noise texture. Um, other than that, I guess it should be kind of rough. It shouldn't be too uh, reflective. And I think now we can hone in the look of the syrup, because I'm pretty happy uh, with the baked look. Actually, let me add one more level of detail since we're here. I'm going to add little white splotches of areas that didn't get cooked very well, uh, because I think that's just going to add an extra, you know, an extra little something. So I'm going to use noise texture with object coordinates so that I can isolate a bunch of little islands, as you can see. So here I'm going for these high contrast look with a high scale, something like that. And I want there to be less dots. So something like that. So th this is gonna be kind of like the bird poop map, if you think about it like that. 
And uh, what I'm going to do with this is this is going to be the area that's a bit brighter. So we're going to mix in some of these white splotches. So before and after, you can see here's a white splotch, etc. It's just going to add an extra level of detail that I think helps. Okay, so now in the context of this, I'm just going to make this actually look a bit more saturated. Not that much. Maybe 0.9. There we go. Um, in the context of this, we can finish out our syrup material, because now we know what it uh, looks like with the thing. I think it should be brighter, and it should kind of look like honey. So I think this is pretty good. Um, only other uh, layer of detail is you could either have it like this, maybe a little lower roughness. You could have it like this, which is kind of physically accurate, like all the uh, syrup is kind of level. Or uh, what you could do is you could add kind of a ripple effect to, to this. It's not going to be very accurate, but again, if you add in a bump uh, followed by a noise texture, so we're just creating a normal detail, as you can see, maybe a low scale. Uh, this is just going to add some ripples. So here is the before and after. So you can see it's actually reflecting the light a lot more. And I think it adds a little extra something. So now that we've done the materials, let's see what this looks like. Because you never really see one waffle at a time. So I'm just going to add a stack of these. Rotate one. Rotate another. This is definitely something you can also do in geometry nodes. So like that. Tilt it. And uh, there we go. There's our stack of waffles. I think it actually looks uh, pretty decent. Pretty edible. Like, it looks like something I'd want to eat. It's making me somewhat hungry. So I think that's a good sign. Either way, um, I think we're done with the material. So let's wrap this uh, tutorial up. Again, I'm still at my mom's house. So if the audio is garbage, that's why. It's not because my mom's house has this inherent audio vacuum. It just didn't bring my microphone. Uh, either way, uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. Um, as always, I like to pimp out the ever-living uh, sandwich out of uh, Patreon. Um, at the end of these uh, tutorials, there's a link in the description, and uh, here's why you might want to join Patreon along with these 800-some uh, people. Uh, Patreon, you get three benefits when you join. First of all, uh, early access to tutorials. So, for example, when I posted part one, I also posted part two uh, a day or so early or however much early. Uh, you can see tutorials before they come out. Um, also, uh, second benefit is project files, so the final waffle with the materials, the procedural modeling, all this that you saw the render of in the beginning, uh, that's going to be available. And at this point, there are hundreds of blend files you can download, so project files. And thirdly, uh, a catalog you get access to of exclusive tutorials. I make those every once in a while, uh, but at this point, there's uh, quite a few you can go back and watch. So those are tutorials that I don't uh, post uh, publicly. But in general, I try to keep everything the knowledge uh, available for free, but if you want the blend files, if you want to see it early, etc., um, join Patreon. Other than that, uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something about ambient occlusion and uh, creating a subsurface waffly looking thing. Um, that's my time. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.